Welcome to South Sound Seniors, program for and about older adults in the community. And last fall, we had a wonderful and interesting guest, Sandy Sinclair, join me for a couple shows telling stories of his adventures in Alaska. And in the meantime, people heard about that story. We've shown the um, TCTV episode down at Senior Services in Olympia. And I asked him back because he has more stories to tell. Okay. Welcome. Uh, thank you for your, <laughs> your concern. I, um, uh, you know, so once in a while we do things that you shouldn't have done. And, and I want to go ahead and, and tell uh, a negative thing. <laughs> and this is going to be about um, me crashing my airplane. Oh, my goodness. Uh, in the interior of Alaska. And so we ended up... Um, uh, we, we built a homestead there, uh -huh. and I had already made a <coughs> day out there with a chainsaw and built out a kind of rough chainsaw um, uh, airport, oh. I thought. So you and cut down trees? Trees, and, 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 um, and, and, uh, and we uh, leveled it out a little bit with a, with a, um, with a, ha with a shovel. Oh, dear. <laughs> and that's all we thought we had, and so I thought it was plenty long and it would be all right. So anyway, so then we came in there with uh, a friend, and uh, Bert Myers, who was oh. my, um, my friend who was the uh, co-pilot for me. Uh -huh. And we, we, we were going to go ahead and land on this strip, and then we're going to take some time in uh, repairing the strip a little bit better to take off. Uh -huh. Fine, but there was one dip in the middle of it. I knew that. And so as I came into it, I, uh, I, I uh, throttled down just a little bit, and then, and then when I, I saw the dip right there, and so I knew I had to give a little bit extra throttle. And when I did that, it coughed instead of giving me the, oh. need, the needed uh, throttle uh, to get to make the land. And then, of course, then I uh, I hit this uh, hole, and it broke a shock cord. I heard it crack, uh -oh. and I said, "This can't be happening to me. I'm the guy that's." That's been protected by the shaman. That's right. Your first story when you were out I on felt, the Aleutian chain. I still chain. it couldn't happen to me, yes. but it did happen. Uh huh. And I ended up crashing my airplane and breaking a shock cord and over in the um, in the uh, head. Um, we we went, went down like and, and broke my prop and uh, my wing anyway. And then, but I was aiming like this, and I had just put the gas in my airplane. Uh -huh. I had full tanks of gas. So there I was, crashed like this, and gas was pouring out of, the, out of the air tank onto a hot engine. Oh, Lord. That's not healthy. That's but not anyway, good. So we jumped out, pulled the tail down, and take care of that problem. Uh huh. But then... Uh, so I was, that leveled it out so the gas yeah, wasn't so, pouring out. Uh, so we got that got problem. It. But then, but then uh, I you know, was pretty shook up a little bit, and um, I thought, you know, um, I've never... Um, I never had a crash in an airplane before, so here's my first time. But, but so what so, am I going to do? Here we are out in the, in the wells of Alaska. No one knows exactly where I am, but I, I, it's not like I'm lost without any help. At least I didn't have any tools to repair my airplane. Oh Lord! But at so, least you were both okay. That's yeah, that's yeah, true. Anyway, that's so good. we got on the air, uh, the phone, and uh, the uh, radio. I mean, and called uh, an airplane to see if we could get a hold of somebody. And finally, there was one fellow that answered me. It was a uh, uh, a fellow that was looking for forest fires uh -huh. because the uh, the uh, rangers had asked him. There was a bunch of lightning, and so they were supposed to be looking for any floor fires in the air, and that's what he was doing. Uh -huh. And I told him my situation. I want to go ahead and let the uh, the Fairbanks uh, FAA know that I had crashed, but I'm okay, and I don't want anybody to come out any rescue for three days, so I can go ahead and find out exactly what I have to go ahead and get for the airplane. Well, he said he'd do that, but it turned out the very next day an airplane came out. <laughs> and so... Um, so how did they land if you were on well, this Well, they were on floats. Oh, so there yeah, was a river a lake, or a lake. We had a, we had a lake right okay. there on my homestead. And he landed on, and he came over and said, gee, I uh, came out to get you. And I said, I don't, I've got to stay here and work with my airplane, but you can take my partner back and he can tell my wife and, and all the people that are back home that I'm okay. And so that was the plan. Anyway, um, but I didn't want to have him l do that, but he, he came so much so that, that he, took the, he took Bert on the airplane 
back to civilization. So you so didn't have a helper anymore. You know, I was by myself with a crashed airplane. <laughs> oh, dear. And so what am I going to do here without any tools? Yeah. Uh, but they did know where I was, so I wasn't like I was. But anyway, so I started to go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do. So I built a tri. I had a chainsaw, and some wire, and so I built a tripod to be able to bring the airplane up to level and start working on it. And I realized I've got to um, uh, take out the engine and get replace it with a new engine ma bracket. Uh huh. The whole the thing that we put the engine on the airplane is busted. Right. Oh wow. So I had to go ahead and do that, and. Um, that was my main concern, and, and, and then of course I had to go ahead and repair the wing and the shock cord that broke, and and um, so all those things had to be done so myself. So you kind of had your assessment, your list of what needed to be done. Yeah, and so um, that was my problem, and I started working on it by myself. But can you imagine the the loneliness of when that airplane that came out to pick him out flew away? That must have been I, really a. I, um, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. I watched it until it went finally off the last distance, and then I listened to the sound of the airplane until it finally was gone. I, I didn't want to do that, but that's what I ended up doing when I was alone. Okay, so then we, um, I, uh, me and the airplane, I say we, we <laughs> had to go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do. And you know, got to get over this shock of it all and start working on how I am actually going to be able to repair this thing. And so I did get an idea of what I needed, and it was a big thing. And um, so it's fortunately, uh, the next couple of days, an airplane saw me, saw the crashed airplane there, and, and it had floats, and he landed, and his airplane came up to talk to me. Oh, wow. And he wanted to know if I had seen this one fella um, that uh, he was looking for. And uh, it was a... Um, uh, he, he didn't know if I knew him, and, and, and I do remember his name, and so, yeah, I know I heard of him, but I've never met him, but he lives in, he made the com, he lived in the little area right next to uh, where I am um, building my homestead. He started his homestead there, and then it was so bad, he left and went to Wien Lake, so he left it there, but I know his name, and so, well, that's good, because I'm, I'm looking for somebody who can go ahead and tell me about him. Well, it turns out I had found that he left my lake and went over to Wien Lake, which is about eight miles of in, of, of apart. And then he was, um, uh, he got in a little bit of argument with the people there and they wanted to come back to where his homestead was and he never seen again. He was lost. Oh, wow. And that's why this wow. person was trying to find him. And, uh -huh. and this, the Washington, the um, Alaska State Trooper said that he was probably lost in the wilderness or got eaten by a bear or something between. Oh my goodness. But that's what happened to that one. So the way is I had, a, at least I had somebody there. <laughs> yeah, but and you had that think, I don't want to be lost in the wilderness. I'm lost in the yeah. Alaska. And so this guy <laughs> said, okay, I will go ahead and get the parts for you since I know you're in trouble and get them ready and we can get them out to you and get you going. And I had one friend, a, teach, a friend that I had known in a, from a previous school uh, and she was living in Fairbanks and so I could go ahead and get information to this one, her name was Evelyn. She was the mother of one of my students. And so that's how I made contact with civilization. And wow. she started to go on the stuff, getting ready to get it out there. Uh -huh. And then, uh, <laughs> so I did get parts little by little. But then when I got the, um, the part that I had to put in to put the airplane uh, uh, engine back in, the bolts were too small. Oh my goodness. And so what am I going to do? And I had no way, my, no way to contact anybody. But I, I heard an airplane, so I called on the phone to that airplane and see if I could go ahead and, and get a contact from there to my friend Elvin and, Evelyn in Fairbanks. Is this making sense? Uh huh. Okay. It is. I'm yep. making sure you. You had to and be so, creative, though. My yeah, goodness. Yeah. So I, um, I, uh, I called on his phone, and finally, uh, I got an, a weak answer, and in the um, from the, and I assumed it was this guy I talked to, and it's no, um, I am a. Um, uh, pilot of a Japanese airline heading, um, uh, I'm, I'm over the pole, my next stop is London. Oh my Lord. <laughs> but I will take your message anyway. Oh, wow. So that's what I end up talking to him and hoping I get the message. And so I didn't know if I was ever going to get the civilization or not, but it turned out that I did get the extra bolts and so I worked oh, on, my Lord. on those things and I did it.
But anyway, all, all summer long, it's happened in, in June, and, and this is, I'm still teaching school, so I'm gonna be back in September. But yeah. anyway, um, uh, so I ended up uh, trying to go ahead and get a, um, uh, this thing ready to go. So you got the bolts. And so I put them on, and it turns out, I didn't have, they still weren't quite long enough, but I still, I didn't have a, uh, a wrench to tighten them. Oh, Lord. But I had to tighten them with, with, a, with hitting a, with a hammer on a chisel and hit that one corner of the, of the six slided bolt until I finally got it on there uh, two and up. a half uh, times. I thought that's the best that I can do. Uh -huh. And so I wanted to go ahead and do that and get it ready. But that was my, um, um, that was my uh, work on on getting the airplane ready, and that was really a hard thing. So to that was the engine. How did you repair the wing, though? Okay, then <laughs> I used duct tape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so That's hard. You, yeah, I got a duct picture. tape. Uh, the lady, I uh, Evelyn came out and took a picture of my airplane with all the duct tape on it. I want to show you later. <laughs> so that's uh, I got that, and then I had to repair the uh, the landing gear, and. Um, and uh, put a new prop on, uh -huh. and I got that all done. And I thought I was ready to go ahead after about oh, two weeks of that. And so finally, I, uh, in about the 1st of August, I thought, well, I'm ready to go ahead and take off. And I um, uh, had already cleaned out the best I could to make the airstrip a little bit better. I, you know, I took out the hump that, by, by my shovel, and. But you know, you got to have at least a thousand foot to take off on an air on an airstrip for my airplane, and then so I was almost ready to do that when um, when I was um, uh, preparing for, to do it, and then it, the, the, rex, the next day I was going to do it, fine, but then the next day was stormy, oh. so I didn't do it. Uh -huh. So okay, well I I might as well go ahead and just use that extra day to with my chainsaw cut off extra tr uh, trees that were on beside the airport. Uh -huh. This is on a, on a ridge, so underneath the ridge, there were some trees that were close by, and so I cut those off to an extra day. Anyways, it turned out the next day, I was ready to do it, and I ended up um, um, uh, making our, I did to get the airplane up on the thing, I had to use a come along to, because I couldn't push it. You know, I was all by myself, right. and I got it up there and um, got ready to take off. And um, and I thought, gee, I don't want to have too much extra extra weight here. I better figure out how far it is to Fairbanks. And and I ended up, I needed to have 13 gallons of gas to be able to make it to Fairbanks. So uh -huh. I took all my gas out and put in 13 gallons only, and then I was ready to take off. I thought. And um, we started, uh, I, I started taking off and pretty soon we got to the, the dip where I had the problems and the, the airplane went up and went down again, didn't make it. But then we finally just barely had enough um, RPMs to be able to get off the strip. And, you know, it's just flight, you know, going like this and finally, finally it got oh, up oh, there. Oh. Just no, but it, it didn't have enough power to make it. So I... I went off the ridge down into the hit, the side where I had chopped those trees <laughs> off oh the my day God. before, uh -huh. and that means I just had enough <sighs> spare there, to, uh, space there to be able to get enough R um, RPMs to be able to make it. So Thank I God you had off. cleared those trees, but huh? That was just an extra day that I wanted. I thought was a waste, but it, was, it turned out to be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> anyway, and so I ended up um, heading that into Fairbanks, and then that, and. Um, so that's fine for 13 gallons, and I thought I'd make it in there. When I was close to Fairbanks, there was a big bunch of uh, fog in the way. I had to go way around that. So, oh, gee, I wonder if I'm going to have enough gas. Yes. But anyway, there's one little field outside of uh, Fairbanks called Phillips Field, and it was just a small little strip there for bush pilots. And that's where I came in. So it was Saturday then. I came in there, and a bunch of you know recreation pilots were in, you know, taking. And I barged right in front of them. Uh -huh. I thought when they saw my wrecked airplane, they'd let it. They would get out of your way. Say, get out my patched up airplane. So I went uh, went in front of all those things, and I ended up coming on down to land on in Phillips Field. And what happened was um, uh, one of my tires was so low that it, that it ended up you know going off to the left a little bit. And pretty soon it was just about six inches off the ground as I was trying to land, and finally. It, it, uh, I made it to the area and, and I, I just I, I finally survived and I had to go ahead and, 
and tell Marie that I, I just, um, just before this, I have to tell you that the bush pilot came and picked us up says, most of the people have, the, there's not a lot of airplane wrecks in Alaska. People bust, you know, bust up a, a plane and they patch it up and take it in. And, uh -huh. and so there are a lot of people that, that, that fly an airplane in that's, that's in bad shape, and, um, but they make it back in. So I wanted to tell Marie on the phone that I became one of those guys. That made that, it in on that. that Patch up my airplane and made it in. That is something <laughs> else. Well, I bet she breathed a big sigh of relief. Yeah, so did we. Yeah. 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 Did you get a bad time about the shape of your airplane? People tease you about the duct taped oh, airplane. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. the FAA didn't appreciate what it looked like, but yeah. I did make it in. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. So had you been up to your homestead since then? Since yeah, that I have. Big... I, I've been up there a number of times, and I wanted to uh -huh. go ahead and... and, um, and uh, I just spent some time alone because it's a, a place away from civilization, and um, but then just at least real recently when I was thinking about going up there, the um, bush pilot came by and said, you know, there's a there's a bear in your in your in your cabin. cabin. Oh wow! And so uh, it's not really in too good a shape. It messed it up uh -huh. pretty bad. And of course, I think it was a mama bear. A mama bear raising so, a cub so they had or a cub two. Wow! Bear. Wow! So that's the story of my. So, your homestead's not in great shape, but the good news is you got out <laughs> yeah. after a plane crash in a patched together airplane, yeah. and you didn't panic. That's the amazing thing to me, is if I would, had just crashed an airplane out in the middle of Alaska, I just would have pressed the panic button, I think. Well, I didn't have any contact with civilization, but they knew that I was out there, so I wasn't like alone without anybody knowing where I was, uh -huh. but I couldn't, any, I didn't have any communication to be able to re let them know what parts I needed. Yeah. And that was not yeah. good. Well, you anyway. got out of it creatively. It must have been quite a story that you told those students when you returned to school in September. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that uh, they didn't believe it probably. <laughs> they probably <laughs> didn't. They probably didn't. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sandy. I would like to have you back on another time because I know you took another big airplane trip across the United States that I just heard a little bit yeah. about that tale. Would you come back and tell some of those stories at if some that's point? that's something you'd like to, to hear, I, I'd be glad to talk to you. Great. Again. And tell me a little bit about this before we go since you brought this, these wonderful... Okay, well, I just wanted to let her know this is what we wear. Everybody wore these things up there. It wasn't just the teachers. Everybody had it. It's a moose hide, a tan, smoke tan moose hide. And this is what the people in the uh, Fort Yukon all, all uh, made nice looking Indian patterns on there. And that's our story. And all the kids had them too, so it wasn't just oh. us. Oh. And of course, in the uh, middle of school uh, day, you could smell everybody's moose hide. Yeah. <laughs> smoked moose hide. <laughs> the school <laughs> was right. Was, at least it was warm. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Pretty and amazing. Well, great. Thank you so much, yeah. Sandy. And I also want to point out this beautiful sweater. And you said your wife knit yeah, she, that? Yeah, this is a, a Canadian pattern that, that uh, she patterned uh -huh. and put together. And I, uh, I really do appreciate did, uh, the things she made. Yeah. yeah. Did she know how to knit when she went to Alaska, or did well, she really learn there? Well, that's really interesting to say that. When she first started, she didn't know. Uh -huh. uh, we were up there, and so she did some knitting a little bit just to practice. and and. Um, and made a, a vest, uh -huh. and, then, and at that time I was uh, in, uh, I was, I was sick, and I went to a hospital uh, away from her. So she was all by herself, and so she <laughs> knitted. But anyway, so when I came back, and we got, she knitted the other half, and it didn't fit. Oh, because one time she was, she was so, so tight, tight she, worried she, about she, you. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't fit the other half, so she never wore it. <laughs> so it never, the vest never came together. Yeah. But she did a nice job on this sweater, I should say. Sure, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, and we'll have you back again. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So we hope you enjoyed that story. We love to tell stories and have you meet some of the interesting folks that we get to host down at the Senior Center, the Olympia or the Lacey Senior Center. Please come down and join us sometime. There's great conversation, there's some great people, and we'd love to have you be one of them. Make that one of your New Year's resolutions for this year. Thanks so much. Stay with us. We'll be right back with some more interesting information.